Welcome to the Jill on Money show. It's Monday, December 19th. It's an exciting day for me. This is my last day of work for the year. Sort of. I hope. Maybe. I'm anticipating. I'm trying to kind of clear the calendar after the 19th and be done for the year. And uh, if I do that, I will be able to clear my head and come back even better for you guys. Of course, you will continue to hear shows in your feed because Mark is a slave master and will not allow us to do recorded shows or the only thing we do, we will be doing is we'll re-air some of in the favorite interviews that we've had for the year. So we'll do that on the weekends. And I mean, that's always fun. It's a, they're good reminders. If you have a financial question, we'd love to help you out. All you need to do is go onto our website, jillonmoney.com. Click the contact us button. Let us know if you'd be willing to come on the air. While you're on the website, don't forget, you must, you must, must, must pre-order my book. It's called The Great Money Reset. It's coming out in just about a month. And uh, the book is based on all the great conversations that I've had with you guys over the years. And the subtitle, I think, is um, will tickle your fancy. Change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Who doesn't want to do that? So you can check out the new book by pre-ordering it. And when you pre-order it, you will be entitled to join us for a cool webinar on February 8th. So uh, go ahead and do that. Today, we are joined by Marie from Southern California. Hello, Marie. How are you? Hello. Hi, Jill and Mark. I'm so excited to be here. I found your show when COVID first started. And as a nurse who was out of work due to canceled surgeries, my financial eyes were opened. I never thought I'd be out of work. So it really shook me up. And I started educating myself and you guys became a daily part of my education. So thank you. Oh, thank you. That's so nice. So are you still a nurse now? I am. Yep. And I'm happy to report plenty of work, even some overtime these days. So at least that oh. issue has been solved. Oh, my gosh. So tell us what brings you to us. What can we do for you? Well, um, I'm just hoping that I can kind of run my numbers by you and just see if uh, we can possibly get my husband retired um, in four years when our only child graduates from college. Okay, great. So how old is your husband? He is 56 in a few weeks. Okay. And how old are you? 52. Okay. And the kid is, you said, is in college or starting? Is Where yes. are we in the process? He's, he just, he's about to come home from his first semester. How'd he do? Uh, he says he's doing okay. He's got one more math final. So fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was like, those transitions are hard. And this is one of those kids who had like, you know, year, two years of high school and COVID. What a drag, right? Is he in private or, or public college? It's a private expensive college, sadly. How are you paying for it? So we had a little bit in a 529. Um, and so we this first semester, we did half out of the 529. And then we cash flowed the half. I'm, my overtime shifts are college money. Oh, my God. God bless you. How much is college? How much is it all in? So it's 20,000 per semester. And that's it? Just 40 all in? Yep. So there's like 20 grand in the 529 right now? Mm hmm. Okay. And then what are we going to do for the last two years? So I also, um, I put some money in I-bonds last year. So we have 20000 in I-bonds that I've earmarked for college. And then um, I'm just socking away to the savings account to um, fill those buckets. You're just going to work, you're, you're going to work like <laughs> 90,000 hours between now and the graduation. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. So how much do you make in your, just your real job, not the overtime stuff, but like your, your basic, like, this is what I make on an annual basis. Um, so I make about 150,000 mm -hmm. um, before taxes. And what about your husband? How much does he earn? 130. Will either of you guys be entitled to a pension? Sadly, no. Okay. So what do you like? So you're making like 20, 30 grand a year in overtime right now? Yeah. The, the last, yeah, the last year or two. Yes. Jeez. That's a lot, yeah. girl. That's yeah. a lot of work. Okay. So we got the college stuff taken care of just in terms of like where you stand. So do you both put money into retirement accounts? Yes. So we have a 401A at our um, company. And so it has a 
DB, and I'm just still learning about this, the defined benefit part and the DC part. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but we do 6% and then they match 6%. So we both have been doing that since we started work at this company 25 years ago. Wow. How much money is in there total in your retirement accounts? So total in our retirement accounts, $850,318. Thank you for the 318. I'm going to let you guys spend that on coffee. You know what? Actually, I apologize. I didn't even count the DB. I'm $1,077,826 is total retirement, including the stocks and the, the guaranteed. But it's so funny because you said, I said, do you have a pension? You said no, but you do have a defined benefit plan, which you could take as monthly income potentially. Yeah, I've always been a little confused by that, but you're right. Right. I mean, so it's not like it's not a straight up like you don't work for the state of California and receive a municipal pension. But so you got a million bucks that's saved in retirement, some of which can be turned on as a monthly benefit. But that's okay. So so that's about so a million bucks in retirement is great. And then anything else that is outside of retirement. So I have like 15,000 in a brokerage. Um, I'm just kind of starting to get started with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in a high yield savings account, we have uh, 71,000, 20,000 of that's earmarked for a car because one of our cars is about to fall apart. 40,000 of that is an emergency month fund. And then 11,000 is for college. Mm-hmm. Got it. Okay. How about um, your home? Do you, do you rent or do you own? We own. We have um, a 15-year mortgage. Fortunately, I didn't listen to you soon enough, and I refinanced you know, a couple years ago. So we're in a 15-year mortgage instead of, I should have done a 30. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's 2.625%. We have 12 and a half years left. The balance due is 274000 and it's worth 750000 and we're staying put. Love our house. All right. I love that you love your house. I want you to keep it. So we're talking a little bit about your husband stepping down in four years. Obviously, once college is over, you can stop killing yourself with overtime. Would you be willing to continue working beyond, you know, for your age 56? Or are you trying to kind of sneak out with him? No, um, I think I would probably work until 65 um, to carry our health care. But maybe I would, you know, I'll see how things go, but I could maybe drop to part time. Nursing is wonderful. It is a profession that I could do that. Would your husband, if he retires in four years, would he be working at all or will it just be you? It probably will just be me. Okay. And so can you live on 150 grand? All right. No college, kids launched. Could you live on one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year? Do you feel comfortable with that? Yes, we could. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you know what your actual monthly nut is? You know, when you think about the mortgage, and you know, again, not the kids stuff, but like just your right. living and the you know, kind of eating out and doing your thing. What do you think you spend on a monthly basis? Uh, around nine thousand, not including paying for college. Yeah. So your one hundred fifty is actually a good number. Yes. That's a good, yes. right. Okay. So when you guys look ahead, you'll have social security. Do you know what your social security benefit will be at your full retirement age, which is probably 67 is my guess. You know, I should have pulled that up, but I believe I'll be, um, cause I'm going to wait till 70 is the plan. So I'll be in, you know, high 3000 range. Mm-hmm. And I believe he, if he takes it at 62, will be, you know, two something, a little over why are we, two. Why are we going to have him take it at 62? He has some health issues. Um, um, so I'm concerned about his longevity. So that's okay. another reason why I need to get him retired. Okay. All right. That's about the only reason why I ever say 62 is okay. But I get you. I think you you seem to be on track. So what I look at when I see this situation is kind of, you know, we always talk about this on the show that like there's different stages that you're going through for the next four years, right? You know, just keep doing what you're doing. You're saving your money. You've got this college thing worked out. I think that when he retires, what is going to happen is you will not be able to put as much money into retirement. I just think you're going to, you're going to have to, I mean, you keep doing your 6% match, 
but you may have some free cash flow that should go in non-retirement savings. You're going to need to build up your non-retirement savings at the same time. So all that money that's been going into college at that point, even if there's um, you're not working a lot of overtime, but just like I'd love for that brokerage slash high yield savings account to be, you know, like like to have a hundred grand in there after everything has been spent, you know, like not just for the car, not the 40 grand, but more like the hundred grand. Okay. And I think that would make a lot of sense. So I think you you keep doing what you're doing at 60. You're going to keep working. Everything's fine. You do this for two years. Then, then you get his $2,000 a month from social security. That should ease things in your mind a little bit just to have that extra cash flow. And then you're going to keep working till 65. So this is like a really good situation. It's a good idea, especially if his health is not good, to have some money that has already been taxed set aside in case something comes up. Other than that, you're going to stay where you are. You love where you are. And I think that you should be able to do this. I guess there's one little niggling issue that keeps popping up for me, which is if his health declines, you are not going to be able to work as much. Is that right or not? It's possible. You know, it just depends on how much help he needs, how much care he needs. Right. Mm -hmm. I just want to keep that in mind. It's another reason why I really want you to try to beef up your non-retirement savings and investing. You may need to fall back on that a little bit. For everyone listening, you can see how in Marie's situation, this is different right? We, we love the Roth. We love all these things, but you can see that in everyone's situation, it's slightly different. You know, listen, if you had also said to me, like, I have a house, but I'm going to sell it, that would be a different issue, but you love your house and you want to keep it. So, you know, I know that, you know, you're young, you're really young. So that by the time you're now coming towards your social security, a big chunk of your expenses will go away. That mortgage will be gone. Do not pay that off any earlier. Do not make extra payments on that mortgage. Okay. No, I will not. You know, obviously, um, you're very generous to be working hard to put this kid through college. If for some reason something bad did happen in the next four years, you could just have him take loans and help him out after. Like, I just want you to know there's a bailout option for you in the near term. If, if something bad happened in the near term, I don't believe that's what's going to happen. I just want to make sure you, I like everyone to have a plan B. I really do. Right. Absolutely. But you're you're good. Do you enjoy your job? Because a lot of nurses are completely wiped out. Are you all right? Yep, I I am. I am. I really am enjoying my job. It's a lot of um, computer work um, and a little uh, clinical thinking. So it's a great fit. Something I can do well into my sixties. That's amazing. Do you have any other questions for us, Marie? I just in my brokerage right now, I'm putting in a little bit into. Um, a, Schwab total stock market index fund. Mm -hmm. Should I switch to maybe I'm thinking I'm feeling like maybe I need an intermediate bond fund. I don't I feel like I have a lot of maybe. I mean, you could do that. I mean, you don't have to do it like you can start that, you know, maybe next year you should say like, let me do half and half, you know, build that up. That's perfect. Marie, go forth and enjoy your beautiful weather. We're so jealous, especially at this time of year of Southern California. So thank you so much for joining us. If you, like Marie, have a a unique situation that you want a little bit of advice on, just go to our website, jillonmoney.com, jillonmoney.com. Click the Contact Us button. And when you do that, you'll get a form and the form pops up and it's fantastic. No sweat. And at the end of the form, it says, would you like to join us live? When you check that box, Mark does everything else. And that's just how good he is. So do that. And when you're on the website, don't forget, you can pre-order the new book, The Great Money Reset, and you can subscribe to our free weekly newsletter, which Mark prepares every single Friday. So that's kind of a fabulous thing also. Thank you so much for listening. We always appreciate it. Put your hands metaphorically on someone's back. Grit, growth, grace. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow. 